years. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robert, how you doing, man? Yeah, good, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to Morning. let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on a small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, well, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling and proud with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. Not Tom O'Brien, Jacob Shoup. Happy to be with you all. Uh, give us a call. Send me an email, jacob at tfnn.com. Uh, let's first look at uh, the end of the bear market. Apparently, this is the largest, excuse me, the longest bear market uh, since the 1940s. Um, so we've spoken about these are major companies that are driving this, right? And we have jobless claims increasing uh, so, so what's going on? Why, why is this the case? And I came across this interesting chart, um, and this looks at basically Morgan Stanley's equity index, um, and then excess liquidity. And this is a pretty good indicator of uh, future performance on the MSCI. So the idea is there's still a ton of excess liquidity. Um, it started to rise from depressed levels as inflation and growth are falling, and that frees up the asset supporting liquidity. And there is just, as I've said, there's just a lot of money going around here. So it'll be interesting how it comes. I mean, there really is like this divergence, right, in the general kind of economy uh, versus how the market's performing. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of fleshes with each other, excuse me, fleshes with each other. So, all right. One of the things I wanted to speak about today, we spoke a little bit about uh, Kathy Woods buying Coinbase the other day after... Um, News came out that the SEC was pursuing them in, in Binance as well. But she also purchased today uh, a bunch of shares of uh, Block. And if you remember from, I think, probably about a month and a half ago, maybe a little bit uh, over, Hindenburg uh, released that article. What I said at the time is that, okay, so there might be some issues, right, regarding Block's uh, reporting of unique accounts when in reality they're probably accounts uh, operated by the same person okay so you have like doubling essentially but one of the other things that Hindenburg really hinged on was uh, it being used for like illicit purposes I, I guess certain kind of black market <laughs> activities uh, but I don't think investors gen generally care about that kind of stuff and this is really what I expected to see it really crashed down below this level uh, kind of after those reports here um, kind of move back down. And Kathy Woods, I think, has a positive outlook on it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we can get back to that, you know, 75 level. Uh, but, you know, Kathy, if you're listening, please call in and uh, tell me your thought process on, on everything you're doing because it's super interesting, right? Binance, some more stuff going on. Uh, S, the SEC said that uh, CZ, which is the uh, CEO, Cheng Peng Zhao, said that he uh, redirected $12 billion um, in funds, okay? And so CZ responding to that, right? And there really is this kind of big, you know, uh, extended kind of conflict, right, with, with the SEC and uh, these, these crypto brokerage firms. Uh, and CZ says that's not even possible because we only had at max, to his knowledge, $2 billion uh, in, in user funds. So how could he switch, uh, excuse me, redirect $12 billion? It's going to be really interesting to see. I've seen CZ speak, and he's the CEO of Binance. And he's a pretty sharp guy, um, and he always comes prepared. Um, I'm sure we'll have some kind of hearings about this in the future, and that will be something super important to watch. But again, um, going back to Coinbase, you know, Kathy Woods purchased $21 million, um, so and she's still sticking with that $1 million valuation for Bitcoin, which is, you know, a pretty big off of what we're at currently. So Palantir. 
again, we were speaking about a little while ago, um, all the big AI people, they signed a paper, right, the AI developers, uh, that we need to put a halt on AI development just until we can develop kind of a framework of how we're going to do it and, and make sure that the impact on the economy and, and really to the human condition is not so extreme. Well, Alex Karp, and he always has something fun to say, uh, he says that this is occurring uh, because they don't have any product ready, which I think you know, the market liked a little bit. Um, Palantir essentially is going to start providing AI to the military, um, if, and they are already, um, but this is going to just get far, far more complex. And I, I was trying to find it for you guys, but I, I just couldn't locate it online, uh, or excuse me, on YouTube. Uh, but it was this uh, kind of mock battle that they were doing, the military, and they were using, uh, you know, drone footage and connecting it up to an AI, gave the AI the kind of information um, of, of the force size, what the capabilities are of the uh, attacking force, which was supposed to represent uh, the U.S., and the AI came out with three or four plans of how they were going to go ahead and approach um, this certain target. And it was just really insane to watch, right? I mean, this is <laughs> going to really change how things are how things are done. I was talking to Bestford about it a little bit, and we just both agreed it is just a pretty insane kind of deal. So, looking a little bit here and going back, that letter uh, with Tesla CEO um, and obviously Steve Wozniak and a bunch of other really um, prominent and impactful uh, tech figures, you know, signed this only over thirty one thousand signatures. Um, Carp said, uh, people who have nothing to offer want to study AI, uh, but by taking a pause, this could lead to adversaries stealing a lead and not only commercial applications, uh, but also military applications. Uh, it says to him, studying this and allowing other people to win both on commercial areas and on the battlefield, battlefield is a quote, really bad strategy, right? And this puts us as a society, you know, in a pretty difficult spot. I don't think that analysis is, is really wrong, right? And he likens it essentially to the Cold War arms race, which I also think is probably a pretty like apt parallel, right? Um, so it'll be interesting to see which way we take it. Because certainly um, other entities and countries uh, that are investigating this are, are not going to agree, or at least the chance is pretty low that they would agree to also halt uh, AI development. So... Palantir's angle is like, no, let's just chug full force ahead. And we'll see, this will probably be decent um, uh, for, for their equity, but, uh, you know, we'll wait to see. So, Tesla, which is really pumping us up today, and we're about to go on break, so we'll get back to it. But uh, GM is going to use their charging network, uh, and that's going to join Ford in leveraging the EV leader's tech, and this is huge. One of the things, and again, I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get back, but, uh, you know, when, when the pot stocks were popping, everyone wanted to get in. It, everything was so inflated price-wise anyways, at least regarding those, you know, the value of that equity, of those equities. Um, and the goal is, is you want to get into things that are kind of related, right? But you don't want to get uh, so into it. So looking at these kind of sub, not subsidiaries, but kind of like secondary companies that will help prop up the EV market. Obviously, Tesla's taking it, right, with the charging stations, but it'd be interesting to look in the uh, market in general for uh, things that aren't directly related regarding production of EVs, um, but help support them. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio tom o'brien is here to help tom o'brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yeah, so going back on Tesla, to make myself clear what I was saying, if it wasn't clear prior, and I, I go draw the parallel from what I was talking about with the pot stocks. Again, everyone wanted to invest in those. Things I was looking at were like uh, Scott's Miracle Grow or any kind of, you know, additional stuff that would be needed in order to produce that end product. And I think that's what's important to look at, especially with something like the EV market. I think Tesla is going to get something like three billion for that. Um, let's see here. This is from this is from an Arkansas uh, news post here. And this is Arkansas will receive more than 54 million for electric charging stations, and this is what's so big for Tesla, right? It's not just you have the you know the the, the private economy working on it. You you have the government as well putting a bunch of money in. So um, they're gonna have one every 50 miles of an interstate uh, within one mile of interchanges. I mean, this is just it's pretty massive to get this kind of grant for it. So there, uh, I think Tesla is going to have quite a good time with this and really like, can the competition, you know, can they even compete? Right? So Tesla's still poised, I think to, uh, stay at a pretty good spot for them. So speaking on that note and just kind of renewables in general, I found this article quite interesting. I was looking at it a little bit this morning and this is elect <laughs> electricity prices in Finland. Uh, they flipped negative. And this is because of a huge oversupply of clean, quote, hydroelectric power. Uh, and that meant suppliers were basically giving it away. And they're running nuclear as well. Um, this is just, it's really interesting. As well as unexpected floods are leading to a glut of clean energy. Um, obviously, this is a reversal from last year when the Finns slashed their usage after cutting ties with Russia. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, while much of Europe was facing an energy crisis, the Nordic country uh, reported that its uh, spot energy prices dropped below zero before noon. Uh, this is uh, meant uh, that the average energy price for the day was slightly below zero, uh, and that's the uh, CEO of Finland's grid operator. Uh, in practice, it doesn't appear any ordinary Finns are being paid to consume electricity. 
Um, obviously, people pay a markup on the electricity and often pay agreed rates uh, for power instead of raw market price. However, I think this is just, it, it, it proves the point, right? That implementing, obviously, in their case, hydroelectric, but whatever you have in the environment, you know, if you're near, uh, let's say, like volcanic activity, you can use geothermal, like the Icelanders are doing, um, but also, you know, implementing stuff like nuclear energy, which I really think, again, is going to be so important for the future. Anyways, I found that interesting. One of the things they say in this, however, uh, is them cutting ties with Russia, right? Obviously, Russia is still making money, and they've, they've done actually pretty well um, this quarter and the quarter prior, um, at least regarding their, their banks. And I was wondering how different, uh, you know, sanctioned nations kind of get their places to where, get their, uh, their goods to where they're going, right? And obviously for Russia, it's oil. And this article, when I was looking this up, uh, is regarding Venezuela, right? And they have something called dark fleets, right? And so essentially what these are is they are um, obscured uh, shipping vessels, okay? And they transport illegal oil cargoes. Uh, this has enabled countries like Venezuela, but also Russia as well, uh, to continue exporting oil, uh, even in defiance of the U.S. sanctions, uh, and that's contributing to the economic recovery. Uh, so the expansion of dark fleets enables Venezuela, their national oil company, to export increasing amounts of oil undetected. Uh, and this is crucial for the growth of Venezuela's economy. Uh, the IMF predicts a 5% expansion, at least in uh, Venezuela's GDP. Russia itself we take a look at this, uh, the VTB, uh, which is their big bank uh, profit, seen at a record 400 billion rubles in 2023. They got hit pretty hard with sanctions in the beginning, but as more and more economies in the world kind of basically strengthen and develop, uh, I feel like the less these sanctions are going to kind of work, right? Also, when you're trading in um, kind of sanctioned raw goods, the countries that are buying them are getting them at a lower price, right, than, than what would be standard. Uh, obviously, the countries that are sanctioned don't have really anywhere else to go, and this helps basically cash flow continue into countries that are being sanctioned. Um, at least the VTBs, which is Russia's state-owned vendor, um, see a profit of, quote, not less than $4.9 billion in 2023. Here, let me get it over for you. In 2023, after a, quote, bumper first five months of the year and a record loss last year. And Kostin, he's the big guy there, uh, told Reuters. Uh, profit in the first five months of, of this year totaled 239 billion rubles. And that was after a loss of 612 uh, for 2022. Quote, we consider a price forecast of about 400 billion rubles for this year to be realistic, which is a record figure for us. And this is just, it just goes in the face of the whole strategy right, of what the West has been able to do for so long is kind of engage in this economic uh, kind of warfare in a sense, right? Um, but, but I don't think that will uh, any longer going into the future be as effective as it once was. And that's in some ways a little bit stressful. If you think about it, right? Because the only other kind of way you have it is either, uh, well, I suppose you could go with diplomacy, but what are we doing with that? Um, and, and then really just kind of physical conflict, which is not what anyone wants. Um, but through these kind of channels, right, with the, with the dark tankers and um, smaller countries and developing economies becoming stronger uh, and doing deals with uh, sanctioned countries, you know, this will be a little bit more uh, difficult for the West uh, to impose on people. Let's see here. Another big thing, I spoke about this a little while ago, and I think I had too much kind of emotional bias in it. I really disliked that Netflix was cracking down on the password sharing, but, you know, that's because I wasn't paying for my Netflix account, right? If you look at it from a business perspective, like, it, it does, you know, it, it, it makes sense. And um, honestly, it, it, I think it was ignorant on my end to, to kind of suppose that they would, they would lose uh, customers for that because really in order to do that you'd, you'd have to be going on some kind of more like moral campaign about it um, however the subscriptions exploded after this crackdown on sharing um, some 100 million people around the world are using borrowed passwords which is insane um, and uh, that was making them essentially lose a ton of money and this has uh, really really helped them so let's see here I want to 
when we get back from the break, I'll pull this up. Um, but it's a good chart uh, basically explaining this, right? Uh, the cost of sharing with an extra person came out to $2 less per month than the basic subscription they were having uh, and a dollar more than the ad-supported plan in, that they introduced last year in order to kind of cushion against this uh, before they did so. Um, according to the report, Antenna used a third-party opt-in service to analyze consumer information, uh, and since the password sharing crackdown went into effect, uh, shares of Netflix have ris risen about 13%. Uh, percent. Absolutely insane. We'll talk a little bit more when we get back on this. Uh, folks, stay tuned. report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we are back. Thanks to, to Fletch in the Den. He, he got this. He dug this up here. And this is Palantir AIP. This is the artificial intelligence uh, that they're basically the military is using it. And essentially what it does, um, let's see here. Let me pull up my little chart here. It's collecting data, essentially, and uh, properly, yeah, here you go, it says it. And it, basically storing it in a, a proper way, right? I think it makes it like immediately top secret. Um, it's using drones, essentially, uh, to view the battlefield, um, and, and it stores it away. But th this is really uh, quite impressive. Um, and uh, I think it's a brave new world on it.
pretty, pretty wild stuff, no doubt. Regarding just a little bit on Netflix, you know, this is the last day with volume here is May 27th, excuse me, May 18th at that 325 level. This has really gone up quite a bit since then. Uh, in the past few days, at least this month, you've had some decent volume, um, you know, in relation to that. So I think as far as, and people loved Netflix too. I mean, if we look back, what was it? Uh, go on the five-year chart, but if we look back to the top of this. I mean, this is like 700 bucks. <laughs> Obviously, I don't think we're gonna get close to that at all, but to see it really recover in such a way, um, all the way down from this, you know, sub 200 to 162 at its low, it's pretty, uh, pretty insane kind of recovery in some sense, right? And that's kind of what you would expect too in, a, in an era that doesn't have just a bunch of free money in general. Speaking of easy money, some interesting data coming out. Bankruptcy filings pile up the fastest rate since 2010. So at the peak of the Fed's yield uh, repression in the mid-2021, uh, the BB-rated companies uh, could borrow around 3%. The companies that are junk-rated uh, because they have too much debt and inadequate cash flow to service that debt. And in other words, investors risked life and limb to earn 3%. And now these investors are asked to surrender such. Uh, but that's how it goes with yield chasing. The BB junk bond yields have risen nearly 7%. Uh, this means these companies had trouble producing enough cash flow uh, to service their 3% or 5% debt and have to refinance this debt when it comes due or add new debt, which is going to be at that 7% rate. And that 7% uh, may still be low considering inflation running around near that neighborhood. Uh, but it puts a lot more strain on these companies. The S&P Global has released in May its bankruptcy statistics uh, for companies that are publicly traded with at least two million in assets or liabilities listed in their bankruptcy filings and private companies with publicly traded debt, such as bonds, uh, with at least 10 million in assets or liabilities listed in their bankrupt filings. Uh, 54 of these companies filed for bankruptcy, and that's the ones that they're listing here are Envision Care, Vice Holdings. Uh, obviously, Vice had this insane, and that's uh, the the magazine and news outlet Vice, uh, Kitty Fernwell and uh, Monotronics International. Let me see if I can pull this up for you quickly. Ooh. Yep, well, anyways, it's not clipping out. Regardless, um, this is, I think, gonna continue. And we were speaking about this as well, um, about probably about a few months ago. And this is gonna happen when these kind of rates come up. A lot of these, uh, companies aren't going to be able to, to hang essentially, right? So what did you expect really from that? Talking a little bit more on AI, uh, there's always the big fear of uh, people losing their jobs. This was really interesting. This is from Statista, and the source was the uh, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And this is services no longer required, they uh, title it, and this is the fastest shrinking jobs. And th these are basically things getting replaced by AI, okay? These are cashiers, secretaries, and administrative assistants, office clerks, customer service representatives, executive secretaries and administrative assistants, uh, miscellaneous assemblers and fabricators. That's been an issue for quite a while anyway. Uh, first line supervisors of retail sale workers. It would be really interesting to see kind of how that's being replaced um, because I just think it'd be some novel application of AI, right? Uh, bookkeeping and accounting. This was huge too in fast food clerks. The other thing as well, and maybe this is being included in office clerks, I'm not entirely sure, but um, I, I know people in the legal field are definitely getting hit pretty hard by this as well. Um, and lawyers are uh, very quickly adopting AI essentially to kind of analyze what they're looking at and make it a little bit more uh, piecemeal for them so they can do a little bit better. And that's from Statista. I wasn't familiar with this company at all. Uh, and this is kind of going on a little bit of a tangent, but um, this is a super neat, website and it just visualizes a bunch of data uh, champions of europe this is regarding like football clubs um the trump indictment hidden carbon footprint of the fashion industry i mean just take i'll i'll, I'll link this at the end of the show but it, it i was just going through it a little bit earlier today and it's it's pretty cool to look at and uh who knows maybe you might find something you're interested in that you didn't know about prior this is interesting on that note and we can go into it this is talking about you know desantis or trump so DeSantis, he basically created an AI-generated image of um, Trump hugging and, and, and kissing Anthony Fauci, okay? And this was supposed to be obviously some kind of dig at him, uh, but it just goes to show we are now very quickly adopting 
things like AI into uh, the political and social sphere in order to influence people and get a kind of a message across. Everyone's obviously, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people are against this. Um, it, so, you know, these kind of lawsuits that will come out and these, these court cases essentially uh, regarding the impact of AI. I mean, I, it was even a few weeks ago where someone had posted an AI generated image of uh, what they said was, I believe, the Pentagon or the White House, uh, an explosion going off there. And if you looked close enough, the image was obviously AI generated. Um, that's only going to get better, obviously. It's going to be harder to distinguish between the two. Uh, but that knocked the, the market down pretty significantly for the time being until it came out that it was fake. And what you look at is it, it was also a major failure on the part of our media, essentially, right? We've now engaged, I think, probably over the past few decades, I mean, I'm only 26, but I would assume it's even longer than that, of getting the news out as quickly as possible. You, you want to be first with it, um, and you want to beat the competition of getting it out, but kind of, you know, you sit back and you think about that for a second, and that obviously is going to result in um, the propagation of uh, false news stories, essentially, right? And that's what we saw uh, with that. And so I think as we move into this new, uh, basically, world, uh, we're going to sit here and kind of rethink. And we, we might essentially be uh, getting back qualities that were more, you know, hearkening back to the 40s or 50s um, in media regarding security um, back into, like, the 70s and the 80s. It'll be interesting to see how technology and its advancements and the kind of pitfalls and dangers that go with that might have us revert back um, to, to older ways of behavior. So, yeah, I thought that was insane. And, you know, I think one of the reasons probably that uh, Trump was maybe so popular back then, I was a young guy in college, and everyone was talking about him. He was the first president, or, you know, the first candidate, at least, to really be online, right? And I'm not saying a lot of young people voted for him, but everyone definitely spoke about him, right? And he was just, he had such a major online presence he was using these kind of new avenues to communicate with people that other candidates were not using. And I think we're seeing a little bit of this with what DeSantis is doing and uh, w with these AI generated images. And really think about it too, like it's cheaper to do that. Yeah, in the past you'd have to make some smear meme or whatever and you pay a bunch of money for that. Super cheap doing it this way, right? It's a, it's a big equalizer in a lot of ways. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. All right, yeah, so at least in the ES Mini, we're getting a little bit of downward movement here. Uh, we'll see if we can end the day below 4,300. That would be, you know, that would be kind of intense, I would say, right? You have any shorts going on right now? That's, that's a nice, nice time to have them. So anyway, um, one of the things I want to look at as well and kind of talking more about these security flaws that exist as we move forward, uh, NVIDIA, um, obviously we had a major run up with them. We all know this. Uh, however, researchers tricked their AI software into leaking sensitive data. Pretty intense. This is a feature in NVIDIA's artificial intelligence software can be manipulated into ignoring safety restraints and reveal private information. And that is any threat actors, you know, what's a good word for it? That I can use online. It's just a great day for them to see something like that. Um, NVIDIA has created a system called the NEMO framework, uh, which allows developers to work with a range of large language models. And the, this is the underlying technology that powers generative AI products such as chatbots, as ChatGPT. Um, after using the NVIDIA system on their own data sets, it only took the researchers a few hours for robust intelligence analysts, uh, excuse me, it took the analysts only a few hours to get language models to overcome the restrictions that were imposed on them, right? And this is like a this is like a little fringe group of people who use things like ChatGPT or um, Google's Palm 2 that's integrated into Bard. Uh, they figure out ways that they can kind of es essentially one of the ways that one of the guys calls it is uh, hypnotizing the artificial intelligence. And essentially, it's the way that he does it is he repeats the same thing multiple times, right? To try to get it to get out of its, I'm an AI, I can't do that. I'm a language model, I can't do that. There are ways around this, and this is kind of a new, I suppose in some ways people do it for thrills, but also it's, it's very interesting kind of stress testing these robots. And if we're going to go to a place where we're uh, giving AI really sensitive data, we already do that with things like the cloud and um regarding like AWS or Microsoft Azure, uh, they start implementing AI to kind of manage that, um, you may be able to find like a back door in the AI. So this is important to understand early on. You know, is it destructive for NVIDIA? Like, no, uh, it's technology. And people for some reason have a pretty high tolerance uh, for the losing of like personal data. It just so happens that we're like that. Um, the researchers found that they could jump safety controls in other ways such as getting the model to digress in ways it was not supposed to. Um, by replicating NVIDIA's own example of a narrow discussion about a jobs report, they could get the model into topics such as Hollywood movie stars health and the Franco-Prussian War, everyone's favorite topic for Fridays, uh, despite guardrails designed to stop the AI moving beyond specific subjects. The ease with which the researchers defeated the safeguards highlights the challenges AI companies face in attempting to commercialize one of the most promising technologies to emerge from Silicon Valley in years. And this is really, you know, what we're at. That any technology is only going to be as good as the humans who create it. Obviously, we laud AI very heavily because it's like almost like a, maybe like a platonic form of, you know, our memory or processing power or something. It's just so powerful. But in the same sense, like, it is, it's not godlike. Yeah, like there are easy ways to kind of trick this. 
Um, and I think we're going to see more and more of that. And I don't know what it's going to take for like a real discussion on that. And that's really the big discussion, really, how to make it safe. Uh, so it's not releasing things like credit card information or personal data um, for companies. Uh, but but we'll see attacks like that in the future, no, no doubt. All right, let's see here. Yeah, interesting article as well, right? Um, this is about France, but it has applications here in America. Um, <clears throat> and this was a general discussion going on about why uh, prices are so high in general, right? Um, this one article, this is from the Liberty Street Economics and is how do firms adjust prices in a high inflation environment. And one of the big conversations that's been going on, uh, obviously among economists, is what drove this inflation. And a lot of people point uh, to COVID uh, bottlenecks on supply chains, obviously important uh, and a big factor. But one of the things as well is uh, some of the analysts were saying is that consumers are just able, at least for the time being, or have been in the short past, <clears throat> excuse me, able to pay more uh, for goods. And this was being seen in, in, in the grocery sector as well. <clears throat> excuse me. So in France, what's happening is obviously prices were higher because the input was higher. Uh, but now input has gone down and they haven't lowered the prices of the food. And so France is now strong arming uh, the companies into to cutting the prices. Uh, so, again, it, it, there's a lot of this, you know, you have the issues of or the qualities of supply and demand. Right. Um, the, the demand in America, you know, according to the prices, has just been high and they will pay a higher price. Right. But is that necessarily good? I mean, it does lower. Um, kind of the quality of life in some capacity, right? Because everything else floats up with the prices of goods like that. Um, the companies which together make up 80% of what the French eat uh, could face financial sanctions if they don't follow through. Um, France's finance minister has previously threatened to claw back what he described, quote, as undue profits from food companies with special taxes if they do not pass on uh, their own lower costs to the consumers. And that's what they're receiving uh, from inputs. It'll be interesting to see if uh, something like that happens as well. Of course, you did get a depression, I think, in in egg prices. And I know less people were buying eggs. At least I could see um, in my daily life that that was occurring. Um, but it, it wasn't, you know, a stark plunge in any capacity. Uh, the prices for eggs did go down, uh, especially after the fear of like the avian flu went away. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see if high prices persist in America if we're still paying as much. And I'm, again, I'm going on a tangent here, but I was like always wondering, especially, you know, in St. Pete, things are extraordinarily expensive, right? And I was trying to wrap my head around why that was even the case. And what I started kind of thinking back on is I had a roommate of mine and he was an EMT and he got a government contract. And this is during COVID to go to the border, right? And they would do COVID tests on migrants. And this guy was getting paid something like 38 bucks an hour to do so where in St. Petersburg, he's probably being paid 15 bucks an hour for an EMT. And I knew travel nurses and even nurses who were stationed here who just, they got that, that I guess, that danger pay, right? And I knew travel nurses who were making upwards of 80 bucks an hour for it. And so there was so much money going to the pockets of, you know, honestly, younger people as well. And at least in St. Pete, we have a bunch of, because of historically, this is where elderly people moved. Uh, we had tons of hospitals. And I, I think that the people there just had more money and they're willing to pay higher prices for these goods. And so really my whole point of this is saying it'll be interesting to see if the U.S. price stickiness kind of goes down or if we're going to have to do something like France is doing uh, and, and kind of forcing these prices a little bit lower. Uh, pretty interesting uh, regardless. Let's see here what I want to pull up for you guys. And so this is also just some other um, kind of international news, but interesting as well. Um, I got skipped on First Republic Bank. It's embarrassing to say, but I think it's important to be open on it. I took a big risk on that. I mean, not, not a lot of money, but a, a big risk just investing in it. Um, obviously, that went away. But uh, Turkey is getting the co-CEO uh, to be in charge of their uh, central bank, which is hilarious. And the, and the lira plunged pretty heavily. Not hilarious in the sense that, I mean, she's obviously competent, right? But uh, just what a crazy move to have happen. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're about to wrap up the, the uh, show here. Like I always do, I like uh, looking at some some science papers. And this is for John Belay in particular. I think you might find this interesting. Uh, this is uh, a study done on mice. It's chronic social defeat. And what social defeat is, essentially, here, I'll move it over here, uh, is uh, essentially just losing at goals in society, right? And this impairs goal-directed behavior, so it's a reinforcement of kind of when you fail at a goal, you're less likely to try to do it. And this dysregulates um, the ventromitral, ventral, excuse me, hippocampal activity in male mice, okay? There are some studies now going on to see if this is the same effect in humans. We do know in the ventromedial uh, hypothalamus, which is relatively close, uh, and this is, this is basically um, kind of what helps you regarding like social situations, I would suppose, um, long periods of isolation and um, social failure uh, kind of increase um, uh, something called the tachykinase in the brain, right? And this, this makes the human male more aggressive, okay? And uh, we're looking at some of the ills in society now, right? Um, one in nine men are no longer in the workforce and more and more are dropping out as time goes on. And there are scientists studying to see if this kind of effect that they observed um, in, social in male mice regarding social defeat is the same that happens in humans. And if this is why uh, more and more men are just deciding essentially to kind of just give up. Um, and this has a lot of implications for society as a whole. Um, as more technology kind of comes and, and, and makes jobs obsolete, of course, new jobs will come in. 
uh, but there is the fear that everything is advancing so quickly uh, that it won't be enough time to keep up, right? So maybe we as a society uh, need to actually put forth an effort in order to pre prevent uh, essentially social defeat in our population. Uh, but, but I thought this was super interesting um, that they observed it in mice and, and now they're gonna go ahead and look at it uh, in humans. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I might be back Monday. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, stay tuned. We got the four o'clock news. Uh, talk a little bit about um, Tesla and we'll just look at where the market closed. Folks, thank you so much.